you're planning what might be your boldest project on 57th Street. It seems to be part of a crop of these super tall buildings that have been sprouting up in recent years. This seems to be a very competitive market. Is there any concern? If you look at up and down the 57th Street corridor, there are a number of very prominent, very tall buildings being built along the corridor. But frankly, none of them have very many units in it. As an example, our building, while it's a very tall tower and it's uh, a very big building, it's really only going to have about 60 units in it, all told. So it's really not that much product compared to the last cycle where you saw very large condominiums, very large condominium conversions with hundreds of units, four and 500 units. What's next for you? Is Brooklyn a place you want to focus on? Yeah, I mean, I think we want to go wherever there's opportunity for some growth. You know, right now, land prices in Manhattan have escalated to the point where it's more expensive to buy land than it is to build a building. Your hard costs typically are lower than your land costs. That's not a great metric. In Brooklyn, that's still not the case. Is that tough to find new opportunities and new sites to build? Yeah, frankly, um, we really uh, are trying to do as much as we can in the city, and we have. We have some new acquisitions here in the city that we're going to announce shortly. But I have less of an issue with a premium site and a premium location trading for a big price. I think that those deals can support it. And you know, while it's a little bit frothy, um, it doesn't really concern me. What I'm more worried about is secondary sites that really are on you know, B blocks or C blocks and trading at an A price. And I think we're seeing a lot of that and that worries me a lot. Um, I think you're, you're getting some very optimistic underwriting to justify paying that, those kinds of land prices. And I think that in the long term, that's not sustainable.